Hey there, it's Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe and I want to welcome you to my new training on Photoshop CC. In this video, I'm going to jump into what I consider my favorite features for photographers working in the latest version of Photoshop. No longer is it called Photoshop CS6 and a new version is not CS7, it's called Photoshop CC which stands for Creative Cloud. So everything now is moved to the cloud. Doesn't mean that Photoshop runs from the cloud. Photoshop's still gonna run from your hard drive, but you connect to the cloud, download it, and you can use it on your computer. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is that there's no such thing as Photoshop Extended anymore. All the 3D and medical imaging features from Extended are now included in every version of Photoshop. So Photoshop CC is one version, so let's jump in and have a look at the new features and see how you can have fun with them. And don't forget, check out photoshopcafe.com forward slash CC. And there we're gonna have our training center for the Creative Cloud products. And we're gonna regularly update this with all the new features from the new products inside of the Creative Cloud, which was formerly known as the Creative Suite. So have fun. So here we are inside of Photoshop CC, which stands for Creative Cloud. So we're going to look at my favorite features here uh, that pertain towards photographers. So first of all, we're going to start with the uh, shake reduction. If you look at this here, you'll see this is a very a blurry photograph because we've got camera shake. And if I'm only looking at it 15% there. If I zoom right in, you'll see, if I double click there, you'll see that this has got some serious camera shake going on, which would make this photograph pretty much unusable. Well, let's have a look and see what we can do about it. If we go under the filter, and then we're going to go down to sharpen, and under sharpen, we've got the shake reduction, which is uh, the big feature in CC. So let's click on that right now. And then what's going to happen when we first open it, it creates this little area. It's creating a sample right now. And it's analyzing it. And look at that. If you look at the difference without even changing anything before and after, we can see we've really um, brought a lot more back into that photograph. And we can zoom in a little bit if we want to see you know, something a little bit better. We can see the difference here. Obviously, we can go ahead and we could do more manual work on it, but let's look at it before, complete mess, and after you can see it's cleaned it up significantly. And as I said, we actually, and it's still actually loading it up. But what we're going to do is we're going to look in another, um, here it is, full strength here. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of other options that we can use. And let's look at this once again, before and then after. You can see it's bringing back quite a bit of detail. So let me just go fit on screen. And if you head over to photoshopcafe.com forward slash CC, you'll see more in-depth tutorials where we'll actually look at this in detail and look at some of the other options that are available. So let's just move on because I just want to do just a quick overview. So the next thing we're going to look at here that I really like is the ability to work in HDR inside of Camera Raw. So if we decide to go under our preferences here and under the preferences, we change the uh, file handling. And if you choose use Adobe Camera Raw to convert documents from 32 to 16. We'll click OK. And then what happens now is when we go to choose the uh, image mode and we change it to 16-bit, normally this would open up the camera, uh, not the camera raw, but it would open up our HDR toning. But now if we choose 8 or 16-bit, let's choose 8-bit. Watch what happens. It kicks in uh, Adobe Camera Raw. And now we're actually working in a 32-bit space and we can play around for our exposure and our different settings here. Let's play around for color temperature. You can see that. Let's take a little sample quickly. Pop this on some white. Right there will work. And we can kind of start to play around with this. We can play around with the contrast. But you'll notice this. If I slide across, notice that this is an HDR image. It's a 32-bit image. And you can see we've got all this stuff right here. So we can play around with our highlights if we want to recover those. If we want to open up our shadows a bit more, see that? So we're actually doing our tone mapping right here inside of Camera Raw. Now, as you're probably aware, we've been able to do this in Lightroom for a while, but now we've got this nice sync between Lightroom and Photoshop where we can do it in both. And you can see we're playing around here. We're going to adjust our clarity, maybe sharpen it up a little bit. And if we look at it here, before and after, we've done our 32-bit tone mapping. And now when I click OK, this will convert it. But let me just play around the color temperature just a little bit more because I'm not fully satisfied with that. And drop my exposure down just a little bit. And of course, if you wanted, you could go and do the black and white. Or we could just reduce the saturation right here a little bit to get an interesting effect. So I'm going to click OK. 
and now watch what happens that actually converts into an 8-bit so we've been able to do that a tone mapping right there inside of camera raw versus doing it inside of Photoshop and uh, let's look at another feature that I like is the blur if you're familiar with the lens blur we're gonna go into the filter we're gonna choose the blur and now we're gonna go to the tilt shift and this has been sped up significantly so the algorithms have been changed in here to make this a lot quicker and so if we wanted to play around with this and just kind of create some kind of a tilt shift effect I'm going to do that but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move this around a little bit because what I want to show you is another feature inside of here that's not used very well often and it's the bokeh so over here I want to actually it's called light bokeh so what it's supposed to do is not just blowing out all our highlights but we want to take these highlights here and make them look like the out of focus bokeh. So if we increase the light bokeh here, notice it creates that little shape. We can add some color to it. And so now we're seeing all our lights are now turning into real bokeh. And you can play around with the light range here. You don't want it happening here because that's not realistic. You want it only happening on your lights and, and your specular highlights. So we can do that and we can click OK and we can apply that. So that's another option, it's just applying it right now and you can see that that speeds things up. Next thing that's new is let's have a look. Here we are, we're looking at a shot here that I did in, in Death Valley. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this in camera raw. We can do it directly from Photoshop now. If we choose filter, you'll notice that camera raw has been added as a filter. So we can click there and now it's going to launch this file. And, uh, you know, this is a, is a raw file. But you can open raw files, TIFFs, JPEGs, and now PINGs directly inside of Camera Raw. Now, you're probably familiar with some of the new features, or, or maybe you're not from Lightroom 5. A lot of these features have been moved over here to Photoshop. But here we are. We can just make some adjustments in here, play around with some of this, give it a different kind of a feel. Let's put a little black in there. Let's add some clarity to just kind of sharpen that up a little bit. And we're just kind of starting to play around with it. Now we can use our radio filter. If I hit down the control key and double click, it will add this. And now we can create some kind of, you know, vignetting effects. Or we can do other things too. If we want to maybe just change the color temperature outside of there, we can make it warm and uh, cool on the inside. You see that? Or we could, you know, obviously just create a vignette. The other thing we can do is we have the option where we can flip this over. Right now we're just looking at it this way. Let's scroll down and we change from outside to inside. And now our oval is actually on the inside and we can play around and do you know different set of effects on the inside of the photograph here. Uh, play around for our color temperature, maybe warm it up on the inside or give it a tint. You can see we can have a lot of fun with this. We can change the size of it, dragging it around. Hold the shift key and now we'll constrain it. So we can actually just move this around to an area of interest, perhaps, if we want to do this and maybe change the shape a little bit. And let's bring our color temperature back. Maybe we just want to overexpose this just a little bit there. And then when we click away, we actually move the rest of the image as a whole. See that? So we could darken off the rest, just kind of adding a little uh, bit more interest there. You know, our other things that work here, too, is our, you know, we can do our brushes here. We get to get to use our, you know, a spot healing brush. And you can see it works just healing there, just cloning like normal. Or if we want, we can actually decrease the size. I'm just hitting the left bracket key. And I can actually use it as a healing brush by dragging it now. And notice it's sampling a different region. I can move this region around and sample a different portion of the photograph if I want. See that? Just playing around doing healing and retouching here. Now, for more information about all these different tools here that I'm using right now, head over to photoshopcafe.com forward slash Lightroom, and you'll see all these tools inside of Lightroom. So they're kind of uh, pretty neat. So all of these now have made their way through into Camera Raw. So I'm just going to click OK just to apply this, and you'll just see a quick before and after. And you can see that, and it's all being applied there. As a smart filter so I can turn that off or turn it back on and there's our camera raw settings I double click and go back into camera raw at any time now and it's just gonna take a second to load it and then we can go in and we've got you know all our adjustments and stuff available here so let me just cancel out of there and let's look at another feature that I like and I just created a black and white here and what I'm gonna do is I want to sharpen this the Smart Sharpen filter has been redone. So let's choose Filter, and we're going to go down to Sharpen, and we're going to go to the Smart Sharpen. 
And I think this is a tool I'm going to start to use a lot more than I have in the past. So what we're going to do is just find a portion we want to work with. So I'm just selecting here. We can see these leaves or even go down here if we want into the roots. And the way this is working is quite simple, really. We can change the size of it just by dragging. Notice that so we can make this thing huge or or small. And we can also change our magnification here. I'm going to zoom into 100% so we get a better idea of what's going on. So let's have a look. What we're going to do is we're just going to turn the amount up pretty high. And we'll see, here's our preview here. And now I'm going to change up the radius until we start to see halos. See those halos around there? Let's bring it back down until we can control them. And if they don't look good there, let's go up here in the sky. They'll probably be easier to see. So there we go. There's those halos. Bringing down the radius until the halos disappear. It's about there. Now we set the amount that we want. And if we're looking at this picture here, we can start to see you know, what's happening. Uh, maybe a little bit more in the amount. And, uh, and we're starting to see some nice sharpening going on here. So the other thing that we can do is we can actually reduce the noise. So we've got noise reduction built in here now. So we can keep the level of noise about the same so we're not sharpening our noise now artifacts. The other thing is if we twirl this down, we look at our advanced settings. Let's click in there. Look at our shadows there. You'll notice if we turn that off, there's noise. There's always more noise in the shadow. So we can actually fade that out a little bit so we're not sharpening the noise in the shadow. And same thing for the highlights. You know, sometimes you get this kind of effect up here where you've got a lot of things going on and in the highlights they can just start to look just a little too much so we can fade those out as well so we're not sharpening over doing those highlights so now if we look at our image here and we look at it before we turn off the preview and then we do it after we can see we got some good sharpening I'm actually going to crank this up a little bit higher so you can see better so this actually takes us here from a soft photograph here to something just really nice and crisp. And that's one of the things I really like. Other things worth mentioning in here, inside the Photoshop uh, CC or Creative Cloud, there's now no extended. All the extended features are now moved into regular Photoshop, which means that the 3D and medical imaging options are now available. Let me just double click here to zoom in a little bit and you can kind of see what we've got here with the sharpening. So you can see that it does a really, really nice job. Um, I might actually find myself using this now more than the Unsharp Mask or, you know, or the other options of sharpening that I've used in the past. A couple of other things worth mentioning too is here, if we click this button here, we can actually sync our presets. So a lot of our different presets here um, that would include our actions will actually sync with the Creative Cloud now, including brushes and gradients and other tools. We have this option here. We can click if we want to post this image, and it will actually go to Behance, which is part of the cloud now. It was actually acquired by Adobe, and it actually gives you the ability to build your own gallery online. So here we go. We can put our information here, and I can go ahead and I can start to share this online and have people come in and make comments with my photographs. So that's just a quick overview. And once again, as I said, for more detail, jump into photoshopcafe.com forward slash CC for our Creative Cloud Photoshop uh, learning site where we've got other videos where I'm going to go more in depth with these different features and show you how they work and give you some more inside tips and tricks. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy uh, what we've got here for you.